this is the stitched with greenery die and as you can see it's just one single die in this set and it's quite large however just because it is the size of a full card front doesn't mean that you have to make it the size of a full card front or always use it as um, a background however that's what we're going to use it for in our sample but i'll show you a few other ideas at the end and please leave me some comments and i'll use a random number selector and uh, send someone the card that we're going to make so i'm going to pair what uh, uh the stitch with greenery die tonight with the count on me stamp set and this is a really cute one that seems to um, have some images in here to appeal to the south pacific with the koalas and the little kiwi bird and the kangaroo but then we also have the north american um you know fox and bear and it's just a cute little sweet set so we're going to use that one let me move these things out of the way so let's start first with our card base so i have a card base of uh evening evergreen and that is five and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches and i folded that in half and then I have another mat of soft succulent. So these are two brand new colors and they go together really nicely. They're, they're like the same green, but the one's really quite dark and one is, uh, you know, kind of a medium color. And then I have cut another soft succulent and this one is, uh, sorry, five and an eighth by three and three quarters. So just a eighth inch smaller than um, this other soft succulent. And this one I did run through the die cutter with the stitched with greenery dies, die I should say, and um, you do run it through just like any other die, even though it doesn't actually cut a shape, it just adds those cutting lines into the, um, into the paper. So I already did a, one layer, so what I'm going to do is use the blending brush and the soft succulent ink. I've already done a layer of that around all four corner, all four edges, just for for uh, convenience and speed uh, on a video. And then I'm going to use the evening evergreen and do another layer or two around the edges with this one. So with the soft succulent, I brought the ink, you know, kind of mostly in. So I've left this portion here, just the soft succulent without ink. And, and then I'm going to take the evening evergreen a little further out so that you get, you get kind of these um, varying layers of green on the edges. So you're going from dark to light on the edges. Okay. And these blending brushes are really great for um, just blending and smoothing in some color. And if you get a little bit of a splodge for any reason, you can just add more ink in that spot and make that particular spot a little bit darker than the others. I'm pretty happy with that. I know on the, uh, actually it shows up pretty well on the video. But keep in mind too, I have observed that as it sits, the ink sort of keeps on absorbing into the paper. So you may want to let it sit for a few minutes and add another layer. Also, if you see some kind of what doesn't look like it's blended that well, sometimes if you just let it sit for a few minutes, um, it kind of, it does start to blend as it absorbs. So I'm just going to then layer these two um, soft succulent pieces together. I might need to stand up so I can see. Okay, so because we've darkened the edges, this layer, even though they were started out as the same color cardstock, you can see the difference there. And then I'm going to put that onto my card front with dimensionals, which I put on ahead of time. So we've got all these lovely different variations of the same green as the inks and the cardstocks all mixed together here. Okay, then over here in the corner, I am going to do a kiwi bird. I thought that that would be appropriate for my audience tonight. So I've stamped the little kiwi bird from the count on me. So I've stamped the kiwi bird with memento black, which is a water-based ink because our coloring mediums are alcohol based and you want to have your ink outline and your coloring mediums to be different bases either water or alcohol otherwise they will blend and mix together and we don't want that and i like to take the darker 
blend. This is the um, bronze, and then this is the dark crumb cake. And just color him in. And I actually did look it up online, and the beaks are kind of a gray or a white color. And then you'll take the light, lighter crumb cake and just fill him in. And just keep going over and over the lines until those colors blend together. And if you find then that the details that you've colored in have kind of, they've kind of lost their detail, you can always go back and add more to that, like so. Anyway, I can play around with that. And then there aren't dies with this set, so you will need to just scissor cut him out, which is quite easy, because he's kind of just sort of a round shape, which I've already cut one out just for ease. Um, and then to give him a little something to sit on because he's quite tiny compared to the rest of the card, I cut half a label and this particular die is from Hippo and Friends. However, you know, it's not specific. You could use um, any sort of shape of die and just use a portion of it. And I'm just going to adhere a little bit where that Kiwi bird is actually going to cover it up like about there and then i have pre-cut and pre-stamped these are these words are from the count on me set and i've just done the white embossing with crumb cake on here and i did a video just this week on how to heat emboss because i found in my classes that a lot of people just aren't very confident with heat embossing and i think it really really adds a great element to your crafting if you can not always have to stamp on white or vanilla cardstock. If you can stamp on your colored cardstock, it um, just opens up a lot of possibilities. And then what I've done is I've put some tape on the back and I'm going to use the Evening Evergreen ribbon. And it's quite a soft ribbon. I might just leave, leave it long on the end so I can go back and trim it. And I'm just going to ruche it on the back. And so ruching is just, hopefully you can see that with my fingers in the way. I'm just making little, little kind of messy loops on the back. Um, I used to do a lot of embroidery and smocking and ruching was one of the fun things I would do with um, beautiful fabrics. It's quite a nice look. And then we're just gonna trim that ribbon to kind of match. Okay, I think that's good. And then we'll put a, this on dimensionals. If I can see my dimensionals, here they are. And I'll just put three on the back of here. Sometimes it looks quite messy on the back, but as long as it looks good on the front. Okay, and then we'll just place that where you think it looks good. Now, with the Kiwi Bird, you can see that I've, I've cut and stamped him out with a uh, very vanilla, and you can see that white sort of outline. So a little tip I have for you is you can take the blending brush that already has the green ink on it and just kind of flick it along the edges. Not so that you would say, oh my gosh, he's got a green outline, but just enough to take that little bit of whiteness or in this case, vanilla-ness, but you know what I mean. Take that a little bit off the edge. So hopefully you can see the difference from one to the other, that it actually, now he just sort of blends in a lot better. And I'll just put him up on a little dimensional, and I might put one foot in and one foot out, just because that's cute. Okay, I'm liking him a lot. And, and then I'm going to use the champagne rhinestones on this little guy. Um, I just like these rhinestones. They just tend to kind of blend in with all sorts of colors and just add a little something. Now then, we also want to do the inside of our card. So what I've done here is I've cut two pieces, the exact same two sizes as these two front pieces. I've just run that die cutter through the bottom of the vanilla piece. You could leave it just like that, but I'm just going to, while I've got ink on here, you might as well just put a little ink on there too, and then it will 
all kind of just coordinate. And then put that inside your card. I had someone comment the other day that she liked that I stamped and did a little bit on the inside of the card that she'd never seen that before, um, which surprised me. But um, I, yeah, as long as you've got all your stuff out, you might as well go ahead and add a little bit to the inside and just bring that design through. I feel the same way about your envelopes too. As long as your stamps and things and colors are out, you might as well make a little matching envelope to go with. Okay, and there's our card. And this is the original one that I made this afternoon. The only real difference is I used a slightly different dye here and I used metallic pearls, but I do like it with the champagne rhinestones. And hopefully you like it too. But if you have a preference, let me know. I'm always curious. I'll tuck that up into the corner. I just have a few other little samples to show you. So this is actually the one that I shared with you last week, but just in case you missed it. But this is the one that inspired me to actually do this one because I was so impressed when um, I die cut the background that I thought, oh, I need to play a little bit more with that. And actually on that note, I'm just gonna set that aside just for a minute. I wanna show you something else I did. I actually die cut this on some different mediums just to see what they would look like. So this is on basic white cardstock. This is on Coastal Cabana cardstock. So you've got your white cardstock and just your colored cardstock. This is what it looks like on designer series paper that's very light. And this is what it looks like on designer series paper that's very dark. Now I can hardly see it so I'm imagining on the video that you can hardly see it either. But I thought I'd show you anyway that the color that you use does make a difference. It works much better on lighter colors. And then um, these ones are vellum. So this is the so, um, soft succulent vellum and this is just your standard cardstock weight white vellum. And this one is what it looks like on foil, which is quite cool as well. So that was fun. I'll take a picture of these and post that too. Now uh, for another sample, this one's also using that Count On Me stamp set, but this time I uh, embossed, or not embossed it, I die cut it on the shimmer white and then took my water painter and some various greens and just quickly colored in those leaves. It didn't take but a couple minutes. Um, doesn't take that long to just watercolor those in. And then watercolored in that very cute bear and put some crystal effects on the heart there and did that in the new uh, or, or the magenta ink so it was quite a bright pink and just a simple little label for the words okay we'll tuck him up there and then this one I wanted to show you that it didn't have to be just a big background either that this this is kind of one of my go-to card designs uh, one that I've repeated over and over through the years just three strips of, of something beautiful. So this time I used Cherry Cobbler. So I thought it would be um, fun to use it just in, in a very different sort of mood and color scheme. And then dip those into gold embossing powder so it, it actually looks quite elegant. And this has been black embossed so it's nice and shiny down here. And this ribbon is actually the white seam binding that I colored very slowly with my cherry cobbler pen so it became very saturated and I ended up with quite pink fingers but I think it was worth it to have that really rich ribbon there. And then my last sample for tonight is one just using some leftover circles on something else I was playing around with today and then just um, use the blending brushes and color them up in some different fun bright colors and use the Stitched with Whimsy dies, which I know a lot of you bought those, so those actually coordinate quite well with the Stitched with Greenery die, or Stitched Greenery, I should say, and then just added some of those cute resin flowers in there for a bit of texture and a nice intense pop of color. Okay, everyone, well, thank you very much for joining me tonight, and if you have questions or comments or um, anything you wanna say or ask, just leave them in the comments below. And I will see you again next week. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.